Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. At half past seven, you will see a discussion between myself and Eddie Butler about the importance of local elections. And I want to say a bit more about that here. We're in a time of absolute turmoil in this country and across the Western world. But within that turmoil is a, an opportunity that hasn't come along for a long time for us to change direction politically. Now, it's very difficult to change direction politically. And the reason it's difficult is because we're living in an increasingly in a world of globalism, where global bodies, unelected global bodies, control our governments. Governments don't answer to the people of their own countries anymore. They answer to the globalist bodies, places like the United Nations, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, the European Union, whatever it may be. And for generations now, we have been, the British people have been completely betrayed by British governments, one after the other after the other. First of all, they've signed us up to globalist bodies and have done what they're told by those bodies, regardless of the impact it might have on the British people. They've bought into a new education system, which has taught British children to hate this country and to have no regard at all for the positive contributions it has made to the world. This is a powerful betrayal of this country, its people, its heritage, its history, and indeed the positive contributions it has made to the world. It has also betrayed us by politicising the police. The police are no longer enforcers of law. They openly take sides in political debates. We saw that in 2020 with the appalling behaviour of the police in bowing down to communist agitators who were attacking, committing criminal damage by attacking statues of this country's past leaders and heroes. It has betrayed us with the media. The media has completely betrayed us. The media has carried lie after lie after lie coming from the government, not questioning them, not analysing, not no scepticism whatsoever about government lines, no matter how much damage they may be causing. And you can see that quite evidently in the coronavirus pandemic. Where are the press with the tough questions? They don't question the use of masks. They don't question lockdown. They just parrot the one side of the argument coming from one group of scientists, the same group of scientists that have been advising Boris Johnson since the beginning. But there are other scientists saying other things and their voices are silenced, not only by the government, but by the press. This is a betrayal of free and open debate. It is a betrayal of democracy, the very democracy this country is supposed to represent and stand for. But one of the biggest betrayals is the European Union. Now, Boris's agreement does not give back this country its autonomy or its sovereignty, and it doesn't give back control either over immigration or fishing waters. It does nothing that he is saying it will do and that the press are dutifully repeating that it will do. It's simply not true. And this betrayal goes back a long time. The European Union was always intended to be a pan-Europe super state, post-democracy. They wanted democracy wiped out because to the minds of the political elite, the people can't be trusted with power because they make the wrong decisions. In other words, decisions they don't agree with. Now, we have got what's missing in all of this is a pro-Britain voice. That's what we need. It's got nothing to do with hating people from other countries. It's got to do with recognising a democratic and moral duty that a British government should have to stand in the best interests and act in the best interests of the people who elected them, not elite bodies who are answerable to nobody. We need a pro-Britain party. But because this betrayal is so entrenched, so deep in our national psyche now, it is going to be tough to fight against it and to produce a pro-British government again. It won't be easy. 
It's a long and difficult road, but it's a road we have to undertake. And For Britain is the only party. The, uh, we are organised, we are together, we have branches all over the country and we are getting ready to go. Now, local politics is really, really important. Not only because it governs daily aspects of our lives, it also has a huge influence on bigger, the bigger issues, such as our very national identity, our heritage and history. And you can see that in the, again, appalling behaviour of Black Lives Matter and others being bowed down to. Our local governments around the country are bowing down to this. They have, many of them have agreed to change street names, to take down statues. We must oppose them and we can only do that at local government level. Our elected local government councillors have caused a huge storm by being the only dissenting voice, the only voice for the excluded people in this country, the excluded majority, by the way. Do not believe the press when they tell you that it is us who are the fringe minority. It is they. It is the woke, anti-British progressives who are the true fringe minority. It's just that they have control of the institutions, but they are still a minority. The press wants you to believe that you are not representative of public opinion. You are, and you will find that out when you go out onto the streets, knocking on doors and speaking to the British people and telling them that you are here, that you are standing up for Britain and that you are not, no, you are nothing like the lying press portrays you to be. The trust in the press has never been so low. This is our time. This is the time to break this pattern of betrayal and introduce for Britain, a pro-British party again. We will not cut ourselves off from the world. That's not the point. The point is we will act democratically and represent the interests of the people and speak for the majority. Karen King spoke for many when in Hartlepool Council she said that the press was scaremongering on coronavirus. They are. They're trying to punish her for it. Julian Leppard said that did the same when he said that these migrants, these uh, illegal immigrants coming into our country while the rest of us are locked up are not uh, refugees or asylum seekers and they shouldn't be here. We should be putting the British people first and people agree with him. But his voice is, he was the only voice representing all of those millions who agree with everything he said. The political elite, Tory and Labour, are shutting out the voices of the majority because they continue to betray the British people. They are following globalist lines. They are saying what they are told to say by the woke progressives. This is not what British people want. Now, here's our chance. It will, once again, be difficult. But what greater cause is there? We have the strength. The mainstream elite and the, and, the, uh, and the press, they lie. They lie and they smear. And they do that because they are weak, not because they are strong. People who are strong defy the prevailing lie and stand up for the truth. That's what takes strength. Going, going along with the lines, going along with it just because everyone else is, that's not strength. That's weakness, and that's what we are governed by, weakness. So strength will prevail over weakness. We're at very early stages of our party, and we will get victory and success at local elections. We will, if we work hard for them. And when we get success at local elections, we will be able to show the people what we are, hard-working decent people who care about this country, who care about the excluded and the, yes, the marginalised, the real marginalised of this country. In other words, the silent majority. We will show the people how hard we work, how much we mean it. 
You don't come into a party like For Britain if you're a careerist, if you're in it for yourself or your own ego. You come in on principle. And we will show people when we win local elections that that's who we are. And then we will win more of them. And then it's time for Parliament. And Parliament will see For Britain sitting on its benches. It's going to happen if we make it happen. We are the rebels. We are the dissenters from the lie, from the falsities, from the smoke and mirrors that we live in. That makes us the strong. And the strong will prevail. We have right on our side. We have truth on our side. And most of all, we have the British majority on our side. Go into these elections whenever they will be ready. We will be ready. Get ready for a fight, for a battle. It'll be hard work, but it'll be worth it. And we will come out on top. Thank you all so much for your dedication, your belief in this party and your belief in this country. We have a event coming up on the 6th of February, which will get us ready for the electoral battles ahead. You'll hear more from me on that in the coming days. Thank you once again. Enjoy the discussion with Eddie.